with Jesus Christ with other Christians all over the world. You may be seated. Announcements this morning. Yes. Uh, I've already been asked about Lila Zepp's uh, funeral arrangements. That's uh, Kathleen Sterling's aunt um, who died last Thursday. Her funeral will be on Tuesday at the Fremont um, Funeral Chapel. Uh, visitation starts at 10 a.m. Funeral at 11 a.m. And that's Tuesday at Fremont. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Looking at our calendar, uh, Tuesday is Bible study, 6.30 at Tavia. Wednesday is Lions and Choir. Friday, Pastor gets the day off. And then we have a whole bunch of things coming up that we need to think about. Hey, before you get into that, let's, I, want, I want to address the Bible study thing real quick. So, so those of you who have attended the Bible study, are you getting stuff out of it? Yeah? Do you, do you heartily recommend it to others? Yep. Uh, We're on Revelation now, guys. It's... It makes me sweat just <laughs> <laughs> So, it's never too late to join. Okay. Looking ahead, um, Adam is ready to video your memories of church. Um, how many came to see you this morning before <laughs> church, Adam? A big fat zero. Don't wait until the last minute and make Adam scramble. So please, um, he'll be here after service today too. And before and after the next two Sundays. Yeah, so the idea is that you just share uh, memories of the church, um, you know, a, a, a special wedding, um, you know, a, a church camp thing, you know, anything where the church has really ministered to you or has given you a, a good memory that has bolstered your faith. Those are the kinds of things that we're looking for. And we need enough time to then edit it into a coherent thing for posterity's sake. Thanks. So do that. Um, next Sunday, the 13th, we will be having our mission meal here. Um, we'll be having a baked potato bar, and the proceeds go to the potato drop. So you don't have to cook, but come and eat and come and donate. October 17th, SPRC will be meeting here at Agency. And then from October through November, we're busy and you can eat your way through the, the month. Um, we will be starting Kids Club October 29th. Eldon has moved their starting date. November 6th. So it's November 6th. Um, Trump Retreat is on Halloween night. And I think Halloween Trump Retreat is set for 6 to 8. Yes. And so that's when we'll Trump Retreat 6 to 8. November 1st, you can go to Eldon for their Harvest Dinner and Country Store. November 2nd, um, in gathering is at Mount Pleasant in the morning. November 2nd, and the potato drop is here. And November 2nd, the potato is having their soup supper. November 3rd is our big 175th celebration uh, service. And it's one, one service. service. One yeah. service, all three churches, 1030. We're going to start a little early since we're doing extra stuff. 1030. Okay. Just like 30. the olden days. <laughs> Don't get used to it. Don't be used to it. Okay. And then, of course, on November 16th is our harvest dinner and God's portion sale auction. So be getting those things ready. Um, our mission of the month for October is blankets, blankets plus. So um, on the small change part of the offering plate, I put 100 blankets. That's a challenge. We have 119 school kids. So surely we can get 100 blankets. So a blanket is $5. No, they changed it. I don't know. I'll have to look at that. Ten. Five, yeah, $5 only gets you half a blanket. So, <coughs> so it's going to be harder to make our make our 100 goal. Yeah, but, we're gonna, possible. but we're going to work towards it anyway. So if you have all month to contribute to that. So keep that in mind. Uh, any other announcements? Speaking of old time, career, uh, as Tom said, we're going to have a uh, cider making party a week from today, and that will be after the uh, meal after church. We're going to try to start around 3.30. We have a lot of apples. If it just as well be turned into apple 
cider. Everybody's invited. If you want to come, fine. If you can't come, that's fine too. But uh, some of that cider we think, we're going to, well, we're going to freeze it and uh, you don't drink uh, at the time. And uh, it will be brought out for the 175th, yep. I think. Before service, yeah. sweets, coffee, and apple cider. Whatever. So uh, if you can make it, fine. You can go home after our mission meal and take a little nap. And <laughs> <laughs> later in the afternoon. So. But ladies bring a knife so you can help cut apples. We just cut them. Do you really quarter jokes? them and then they'll if go you have in and grind up real well. And, uh, and then we press them and we get lots of yummy juice. Incidentally, it's uh, uh, the apple cider press that uh, I bought when uh, Siebert and Marlene, who were longtime members here at Johnson's, uh, uh, had their farm sale that was way back when one year ago. Yeah, clean milk jugs and knives. Yeah, that helps. Yeah. We have some more with the yeah. Clean jugs and knives. Information's on the agency Facebook page if you're interested in the service stuff. And looking at birthdays. Courtney Smith has a birthday on the 9th. Courtney Plata. Oh, you wrote it down wrong and I just read it. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney Smith Waddle is celebrating her birthday on the 9th. I got it right in one place and wrong. <laughs> and Cody and Courtney Waddle are celebrating their anniversary today. So. And they are off celebrating. They're off celebrating. They're off celebrating. Well, I think we thanked them last. Yes, we did. So maybe we got them in there once. Are there any other announcements? If not, would you please stand and join with me in the prayer of call to worship? Almighty God, from the ends of the earth, you have gathered us around Christ's holy table. We come to feast together. Have mercy on your church, troubled and divided. Renew, Renew us and make us one. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in our first hymn, which is out of the Faith We Sing, the Black Book. Come to the table, number 2264.
7. We'll read it responsibly from number 852 in the hymnal. Life. 
not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching, with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. And our gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. He replied, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, Come along now and sit down to eat? Won't he rather say, prepare my supper and get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Want to come see me, Colin?
interwoven ideas to consider today. We will be reminded of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ in times of service and in times of suffering. And today these reminders are in the context of World Communion Sunday, when United Methodist congregations join many Christian churches across the globe in celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper. This celebration began as a Worldwide Communion Sunday at uh, Shadysville Presbyterian Church in Philadelphia, or excuse me, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in 1933. It was to demonstrate the interconnectedness of Christian churches, regardless of denomination. It was in 1940 that the Federal Council of Churches, now the National Council of Churches, of which Methodists are a part, it was 1940 when, when we adopted it. And so the Methodist Church also collected special offerings in connection with World Communion Sunday for the Fellowship of Suffering and Service. Sermon title this morning is Be Reminded, Service and Suffering. The forerunner of today's UMCOR, United Methodist Committee on Relief, received half of that special offering, and the other half was divided between two agencies that, that ministered to military members the Methodist Commission on Chaplains, and the Methodist Commission on Camp Activity. Now the picture on the front of your bulletin this morning is that of a military award called the Humanitarian Service Medal. A medal given by the military to individuals who have participated in, in certain activities that include natural disaster relief, evacuation of non-combatants from hostile area, or humanitarian support to refugees. It's for service to those who are suffering. And our scriptures today remind us of, of suffering and service. In Lamentations, Jerusalem is depicted as deserted, lonely, and weeping. Judah is in exile, and the people are in servitude as refugees. In our psalm, there's more weeping, and the people are bereft of song. Yet Paul has happier reminders for us in his second letter to Timothy. He constantly remembers Timothy in his prayers. He is reminded of Timothy's sincere faith, which first lived in his grandmother Lois, in his mother Eunice, and now in Timothy himself. Now, I also had a grandma Lois, and she loved having family pictures and videos. In fact, one of her favorite pictures was of her mother, whom she lost at a very young age. Generations of my family, I have them, I have them listed in an online family tree. And sometimes I'm treated to, to pictures of, of great, great distant relatives when, when other people in the tree share stuff that they've had from their family photo albums. And as I look through these, these old photos, and traverse the branches of the family tree, I, I wonder sometimes how my ancestors shaped me. How much did my great-grandfather, being a Methodist preacher, influence his family? Was my grandma Lois named for Timothy's grandmother? Uh. I wonder if she was a, a stereotypical PK, you know, preacher's kid. If she was a little on the rebellious side. Back when my favorite memories is, is when she got Grandpa to dress up as Baby New Year for Christmas one year. I've got a video of that. Paul's letter to Timothy starts out with the roots of faith in Paul's life. The faith that he shares with his ancestors. We share our faith in God with our ancestors and with each other. Paul goes on to share his impression of Timothy's grandmother Lois and, and mother Eunice. Paul often names and, and praises church leaders in his letters. And today, it's Lois and Eunice. They are the roots that have nurtured Timothy in his faith. Yet, Paul seems specifically thankful for their sincere faith. Not anything they did, necessarily, but their, their sincere faith. And Paul tells us in Romans that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. This is not... This is not said so that Lois and Eunice and Timothy should be puffed up or, or prideful in their faith. After all, we are to boast of nothing but the Lord. 
because Paul then calls upon Timothy to join him in his suffering, in his suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Our scripture says God has saved us and called us to a holy life. Notice it doesn't stop with saved us. The story isn't over when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because if you truly accept him as your Lord, you start on a path of discipleship. A journey from justification to sanctification. So those who, is, who are sincere in their faith, like Lois and Eunice and Timothy, they will follow that discipleship path, despite any suffering that may come as a result of their service. And Paul is our example here. He's writing to Timothy from prison. And I believe his admonishment to Timothy is applicable to all Christians. To fan the flame, fan into flame the gift of God. And don't be ashamed by the testimony about our Lord. The apostles in the Gospel of Luke said to the Lord, increase our faith. And Jesus replied with the story that, that faith the size of a mustard seed is enough to move a tree into the ocean. It's a story we've, we've all heard before. But in my recollections, I don't remember nearly as much emphasis on the latter verses of that lectionary reading that we heard this morning. Verses that read, suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down to eat? Won't he rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready, and wait on me while I eat and drink, and after that you may eat? Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. As sincere as Lois and Eunice's faiths were, as much as Timothy and Paul might do for the Lord, Jesus said to the apostles in the gospel, so you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. This is a hard teaching. How many Christians do we know today with sprained arms and shoulders for patting themselves on the back for the good work they have done? Look at social media. There's a theological term for thinking that you've done more, than, more for God than duty requires. It's called supererogation. And in our Book of Discipline, as part of our Articles of Religion, it says of supererogation that it cannot be taught without arrogancy and impiety. Oh, I gave 11% of my income to charity this year. Don't you know that your income isn't your own? 100% of it is the Lord's. You are but a steward. Did you need 89% of it to care for you and your family's needs? Did that cover more than your daily bread? In the words of John Wesley, did you earn all you can, save all you can, and give all you can? I served two hours at the soup kitchen this month. Well, how much TV did you watch this month? How many football games did you watch? You know that that time is God's also, right? So don't be arrogant about what you give or do for the Lord. Jesus said, so you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. That's what it means to be in service. 1 Corinthians 7.22 says, For the one who was a slave when called to the faith in the Lord is the Lord's freed person. Similarly, the one who was free when called is Christ's slave. In his letter to the Romans, Paul introduces himself as a slave or servant of Christ Jesus. This is the level of service that we should strive for. In Romans 6, Paul says, Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God, though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. Now remember, in Paul's time, slavery and servanthood didn't have quite the negative connotations that they do today. He was just, he was just speaking in the parlance of the day, in the, in the language of the day. So
So if we put it in the language of the day, when you put in eight hours of the job and you get paid for eight hours of the job, you've done your duty. In fact, Colossians 3, 22 through 24 says, Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, and do it not only when their eye is upon you to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. As a professed Christian, your life, like it or not, is a constant testimony of what being a Christian means. Every word you say, every action you take, your diligence at your job, every debt that you owe, becomes a witness of what it means to be a Christian in front of the world. In Romans 6, Paul is using an example from everyday life in his time and place. And he goes on. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things that you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our service isn't for the praise or recognition of men and women. Our service is to the Lord. And that service has its own reward. Obedience leads to a righteous, holy life. One which will be a good testimony about what it means to follow Jesus. Good testimony about what it means to be a Christian. A life that leads to God's gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. When we step into that next life, we long to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen? For the Gospels say that Christ himself did not come here to be served, but to serve others. As a disciple of Jesus Christ, how can we do any less? And Jesus' path of, surfing, of serving led to suffering. He said that anyone who did not deny themselves, who would not pick up their own cross and follow him, was not worthy of him. We must be ready to give up everything. And we have many examples in our history to follow. We are rooted in a heritage of people going back 2,000 years who follow, as Paul says, our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. We are rooted in a faith that is practiced around the world, even by those who are at risk of persecution for sharing their faith. Praise God for all those who came before us, who took Paul's reminder to Timothy to heart, fanning the flame the gift of God. Because God did not give us a spirit of cowardice or fear, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. We have this good treasure, this strong, rooted faith. Just think about here in our own communities, how long these churches have been doing God's work. Yet the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to God's own purpose and grace, writes Paul. For by grace are you saved through faith. It is the gift of God, not of yourselves, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Those that came before us, they only did their duty. And we should do no less. And today we are reminded that it is not only our local church, which we are a part of, but the worldwide community of believers. Fellow servants of Christ, many of whom who are suffering even now in their service to him. Jesus Christ who suffered even unto death to free us from sin and death. So today the United Methodist Church celebrates World Communion Sunday with congregations all over the globe. I think there's special offering envelopes in the back. Oh, they, they made it in the bulletins. That's awesome. And those, those offerings will go to education um, to bring up new people in, in the faith and, and leaders in the faith, both here and across the globe. 
We are together with followers of Jesus Christ in, in large churches and small, on farms and in cities, in ornate buildings, under tents, where they all gather to receive the bread and cup of, of Holy Communion. Some will receive cubes of bread, some will tear from a common loaf like we will, some will receive a wafer, some will drink from a common chalice, some will dip a piece of bread into the cup, some will have individual glasses, some will use wine, some juice, some will offer both. Pastors will lead a variety of, liturgy, of liturgies in many languages, they will dress traditionally, formally, casually, but despite the differences in our denominations and our traditions, we celebrate our unity in Jesus Christ. One bride for Jesus Christ who taught us, do this in remembrance of me. And as you receive the bread and the cup, remember that you are part of the church universal, united in Christ across space and time. That you are part of the church of Jesus Christ, and today we share together a meal in remembrance of Jesus Christ, but he shared a meal with his disciples the night before he gave up everything for us. And perhaps sharing this communion will be the moment for you in which you will be able to testify about to others. A moment when you feel Jesus making a difference in your life, because that's what he wants for you. He wants to make you a new creation. He came and showed us how to serve and love one another. Now here we do communion by, by intention. We take a, we're offered a piece of the bread, and we take the bread and we dip it into the cup. And the United Methodist Church serves an open communion. The only thing being necessary is that you desire to have a closer relationship with Jesus Christ. And as you follow along in your, in your hymnals, you're reminded that Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live on all the face of the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, power, and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today his family and all the world is joining at his holy table. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, 
in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and drink. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world, and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
receive the blessing. As you have been fed at this table, go to feed the hungry. As you have been set free, go to set free the imprisoned. As you have received, give. As you have heard, proclaim. And the blessing that you have received from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be always with you. Amen.